A quick little video today. A few of you asked if I could rebuild this uh, 900 megahertz Yagi and uh, you know make it work. And uh, yes, we can. I mean, the Yagi itself is pretty good. It's just let down by the coax, and I've got a uh, pigtail here of coax with an end connector already crimped on one end. I've prepared the coax ready at this end. I've got some of the inner core of the same coax here that we're going to replace, use to replace this inside this tube here. So basically I've got to desolder everything and try and open up this crimp and get this uh, crappy coax out of there. So I've squished this a little bit in the vise, so I think I should be able to pull this out of there now. I should be able to uh, just crimp that back up because the coax that I'm using is a little bit thinner in diameter than this original. So now what I want to do is desolder these two pins so I can pull the old coax out of there. Maybe if I push it from this side. I'll we'll get the inner core anyway. It doesn't want to come out this way. Let's see if I can get it out this way. Now oh, there we go. So now I should be able to fit this coax through and possibly get a crimp on there. So I'm getting ready to desolder this part out of here, but because this is aluminium, I think what they've done is uh, stuck a metal shim inside there. Uh, another piece of uh, tubing, slightly smaller in diameter, um, to solder that uh, onto there. I didn't pick that up in the original video. Well, that's what they've done. You know, I'm just going to cut that off. And then we can just solder onto that, use it as a, a solder pad to solder onto. Now, hopefully we should just pull this round. There we go. See, I thought it'd be easier to uh, strip this end of the wire and feed it through, but unfortunately the copper keeps getting caught on something, so I'll thread it through this end and then strip it when we get it out the other side. Just need to strip that end of the wire. We don't need a great deal, just enough to solder onto. I'll just put a little bit of tin on there as well. Might have a little bit uh, too much exposed there, but we can always trim it back. It's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. Now, before I go soldering this in place, I want uh, to put some heat sink tubing over. I'm not sure whether this is a little bit too big, but uh, it's the only diameter I've got at the moment. So I don't pull it back through again. I'm just going to hold it with these needle nose pliers and gently tease it off the end. There we go. I'll just trim a little bit more off of that. We don't need it quite that long. tweezers, hold it into position and get some heat in there, solder to flow. So I've got my coax here and you can see what I've done with that uh, outer braid and I've already pre-tinned on here as well. So I'm going to uh, pop this in here and then solder that end to this end down in here. 
wheel it about. It's made easy because this coax is a smaller diameter than the original, but uh, I've got it lined up. I just need to solder that in place like so. And then I'm hoping that I can get a crimp on this and crimp it down um, so it's just a little bit neater. So we get these two lined up, a little bit of heat, and get the solder to flow. Just there, so I want to position it, I want to make doubly sure that I don't short out on here. You see how that wiggles in and out? Yeah, I want to make sure that uh, we don't do that, but uh, yeah, I want to see if I can get a crimp on this now. So I ended up having to uh, crimp it in the vise, but uh, it's got the job done anyway. And uh, just double check that you don't short anything out on the inside of there. I'll probably pack that with some foam again like they did, and then uh, cap it off with some uh, hot glue. But uh, got my heat shrink tube in here, so should cover a multitude of sins. And same with the top one as well. Move this back into place and then cover that up with some heat shrink tubing to make it waterproof as well with the heat shrink tubing so if you want to mount this outside it shouldn't be a problem so a pretty straightforward modification then and we have got ourselves a uh, decent little Yagi for 900 megahertz and uh, yeah all it took was some decent coax and hopefully uh, you get a better idea how this uh, element and ballon arrangement works inside there now it is pretty straightforward if you did enjoy the video just a quick one please uh, give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one ah, a little bit of force